good evening welcome to the video lecture the topic of this video lecture is quantization quantization error signal to quantization noise ratio and it is a part of a series of video lectures on the subject digital communications and this is jay krishna currently with sridhyaniket engineering college tirupati so quantization before we take quantization let's analyze let's understand a continuous time signal a continuous time signal will have a continuous range of values that is amplitude values as well as the signal is present for all the values of time t usually to convert a continuous time signal into a digital signal first of all we will perform the operation sampling so in sampling we are going to take the values of the signal at predetermined defined values of time t so here in the example we are taking the value of the signal at time t is equal to capital t 2t and 3t and so on but we are not taking the discrete values of amplitude by that what i want to say is at time t is equal to capital t we are taking the value of the signal whatever the value of the signal that we are taking that is, that means if you consider here you observe here at time t is equal to capital t it is somewhere between the first and second quantization levels if you take uh, if you observe the amplitude axis it is it is splitted by using the horizontal uh, lines so if you take the first horizontal line as the second quantization level because uh, at time t is equal to 0 at that time whatever the amplitude we have that is uh, at uh, y axis is 0 that is the first quantization level the second quantization level is the first horizontal line but now you observe the signal at time t is equal to capital t that time the value is in between the two horizontal lines okay and if you observe the signal at time t is equal to 2t the signal is just above the second horizontal line and similarly the sample values the sample values are of different amplitudes and if you if you try to find out the total different amplitudes the sample values takes is almost infinite so in quantization what we are trying to do is we are trying to limit the number of amplitude levels that a signal can take so now you observe here if you observe at a time t is equal to capital t the value is in between the two quantization levels the two quantization levels but now you observe here at time t is equal to capital t we have approximated the signal's amplitude to the first quantization level or let it be second quantization level and similarly at a time t is equal to 2t the sample value is approximated to one of the quantization levels which is usually near nearest quantization level similarly if you observe the whole signal now contains only specific amplitude levels it cannot take whatever the value it want okay whatever the value it originally has so here indirectly we are introducing a certain amount of error usually we call that as quantization error so here if you observe the original signal is sample first where we are taking only few sample values at time t is equal to t 2t 3 and so on and the quantization takes the only a finite amplitude levels for all these sample samples now the quantization operation can be characterized by using this waveform where it is plotted with respect to output is plotted with respect to the input you observe if input is in between minus delta to delta but actual delta is the step size delta is the step size uh, by that what we mean is 
here the amplitudes are discretized right so starting from zero the next quantization level it is delta the other quantization level is 2 delta so the difference between the adjacent quantization levels is called the step size and we are letting that as a delta and you observe here if the input is in between minus delta by 2, 2 to delta by 2 we are going to take the value as a 0 and similarly if the input lies between delta by 2 to 3 delta by 2 that is 0 0.5 delta to 1.5 delta in between delta is there so we are going to take the delta as the output so this characterizes the quantization operation and here if you observe when time when the input is zero the output is also zero that time there is no error at all similarly if the input is delta then output is also a delta and similarly if input is 2 delta output is also 2 delta so this is these are the points where there is no error at all but if you observe the value of the input at delta by 2 that time the value of output is delta so there exists a maximum error and if you observe so it is linearly varying in between delta by 2 to minus delta by 2 and we can thought of the quantization error as a random variable which is distributed over minus delta by 2 to delta by 2 and it is a uniform random variable hence we can have the probability density function for that random variable as the standard formula is 1 by b minus a where the random variable uh, the variable lies between a and b so here a is um, a is minus b by uh, minus delta by 2 and b is delta by 2 so if you apply the formula 1 minus b minus 1 by b minus a will be getting 1 by delta and we are interested to calculate quantization error it is of no use if you take the absolute value as a measure because if you have uh, if you have if you are trying to take the individual values the individual error may be a negative value or some other time it may be a positive that time both gets cancelled and even if there is an error we may have to assume that there is no error when we take only error into consideration that's why usually we will be taking mean square error so for that we need to calculate e of q square here we already assumed q as a random variable which characterizes the quantization error now we need to calculate the expected value of function of random variable and we can do that by using that formula that is integral minus infinity to infinity and whatever the density function we have for the random variable and whatever the function of the random variable here q square is the function so we will be substituting and the integration will give us delta square by 2 so this is quantization error then signal to quantization noise ratio so the output signal to quantization noise ratio can be calculated by the signal power by the noise power we have already calculated the noise power here the noise is not a real noise but is a, as i told you when we are performing the operation quantization we are introducing certain amount of noise or error so we are referring here when we are calling when we are saying that signal to noise ratio we are actually referring quantization error using our noise so here we are uh, using quantization noise we can use them there is no problem and here as we already calculated the quantization error which is the delta square by 2 if we substitute we will be getting the expression 12 sigma x square by delta square so now we need to relate sigma x square with delta so now come back to the characteristic function of quantization here the range of the signal the maximum range that we have given at the output is 3 delta and minimum is 3 delta and how many quantization levels are there 
so from starting from minus 3 delta to 3 delta there are seven quantization levels because here we are taking a symmetric quantizer which will be taking say from minus uh, x minus uh, l minus some m to m so the quantization level value is minus m up to m so if you count the number of quantization levels we will be getting 2m plus 1 so we are going to get odd number of quantization levels so here in this example starting from minus 3 delta to 3 delta we are having seven quantization levels and each quantization level as we know it is of length delta so we can relate we can relate the maximum value of the input and the maximum value of the input which will be mapped to the output and the step size delta and the number of levels l so this is the relation 2 max 2 max 2 x max means 2 into what is x max here 3 delta so in this example so total it will become 6 delta divided by delta 6 delta divided by delta will give us 6 plus 1 7 which is the total number of levels we have and we are letting the number of levels number of quantization levels by capital L delta is the step size and x max is the maximum value that, that we are mapping to the that we are mapping the input to the output and as I told you we are going we are using a symmetric quantizer which will have odd number of quantization levels so for example if you are using two bits if you are using two bits we can represent the two bits actually before we start talking about bits let's see why bits are coming after quantizing we will be having number of quantization levels each quantization level will be assigned a code board of a specific number of bits so in the previous example if you observe there are seven quantization levels so we need to use three bits now what I am saying is if you are using two bits there will be four different possibilities so we can represent four quantization levels but usually a symmetric quantizer will have odd number of quantization levels so L which is the number of levels and if you are using n number of bits L will be equal to 2 power n minus 1 and already we have given an expression for L in terms of x max and delta so we can equate these two and get delta expression in terms of x max and n now there is a concept called loading factor which defines the range of input signal within the quantization level so for example if the input function exceeds the maximum quantization level which we are planning then there will be a large amount of uh, quantization error so to avoid that there is a condition stating that the x the input can take from minus uh, 4 sigma x to 4 sigma x so x max should be 4 sigma x so if this condition is met what will happen is the probability of the input signal going outside of the range of quantization levels will be very less and it is typically 10 power minus 4 now we are taking x max equal to 4 sigma x and we already have the expression for delta which i have written at time now we can write the expression for delta by substituting the value of x max and we already have the expression for signal to noise ratio in terms of sigma x and delta now we are substituting the expression for delta from the previous expression so we will be getting this expression now we are ignoring minus 1 for larger n values which is greater than 6 that time we will be getting this expression and this is a linear value and if you convert it into decibels we will be getting 6n minus 7.2 so here n is number of bits that we are using for the or to represent the quantization level so as n increases the signal to noise ratio is increasing so if there is an increment of number of bits that we are using by 1 then a signal to noise ratio will be increased by 6 decibels so more the number of bits we use less the quantization error and more the signal to noise ratio thank you